guys good morning good afternoon and good evening to you that depends on where you are right now watching us from god bless you you are welcome once again to this platform yes queen now miss lekwala ogungu she left the palace of oni of fifa some years back and a lot of people especially most of us that are outside most of our fans all over the world have not I've yet to know the main reason why she decided to leave the uh, palace and to leave the marriage between her and Oni of Ife. So, a lot of rumors we, we got during that period, a lot of issues came up and a lot of people were saying uh, some things why Queen Naomi left the palace during that period. But now, the, the real truth why Queen Naomi left the palace was revealed in a seminar in Singapore where she made that revelation herself. Yeah, the reason why Queen Naomi left the palace was somewhat spiritual, and she said this to people that were sitting, that were listening to her in that seminar. So, Queen Naomi Silekola said she asked for a particular gift from God, where Holy Spirit told her she has fulfilled the reason why. She sent her into the parlor and she asked for a particular thing from God. And immediately God did that for her. She left that marriage for good. So we are going to listen to Queen Naomi Silekola from Singapore, where she made this revelation known to people. The main reason, and which most of us did not know, uh, we, 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 we just believe the rumors. That we hear from from the internet the moment that we hear from the bloggers but the truth has actually come out from queen naomi Silekwa. so let us listen to queen naomi Silekwa from singapore to tell us the main reason why she left the palace uh the marriage between her and only of well, blessing to be a blessing yes, yes. that's the purpose of our gathering here so that we take this that the 200 of people that have, everybody here right now, you are going to go and infect, you know, there's an effect, the way Corona went yeah. viral. We are going to make Kingdom financing go viral. Right. That's it. So thank you all so much once again, give a round of applause to yourselves for being here against all odds. I am going to bring it up the next panel. So in Toluwa, no, no, oh. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, because of time, we already have the queen in the house. I mean, so we need all the women of the family first. So, this is the new panel. The next panel section is um, the Women of Excellence 2. And uh, we just have uh, Pastor Naomi taking the place of uh, Mrs. Omo. So, we just have another 45 minutes with them. Then we proceed. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Put your hands together for Jesus. Awesome. So today's um, um, Women of Excellence panel is um, a tale of two Naomi's. We have Queen Naomi and Pastor Naomi. Awesome. And we know with Naomi's only good things happen. Yes. And Naomi's uh, brings redemption. Uh, Naomi's turn things around. So I'm not just dive right in. The, the, the theme is rise and thrive. So let me go to Pastor Neil. Financier, but more importantly, she's a yielded woman. A banker, coach, consultant, banker, but what I hear most is she's a yielded woman. That's about right. Queen Naomi, you're a woman of many parts. If we begin to peel back all the layers, so I just want to ask you in about two minutes. People know the Queen, but who I want you to share the things you do that most people may not know about. Okay, so um, I don't know what people may not know about because uh, I feel like my life is always out there one way or the other. <laughs> as much as I try to keep to myself, but it is what it is. Um, well, I had a child of God first before being a queen a mouthpiece of God, a crusader, an evangelist, um, a teacher, um, proud mother of Prince Nadine Kao, um, 
a student of international relations. Oh, okay. That, that part, we didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, um, okay, I'm a philanthropist too, and I love to do so many things. I'm actually a designer too, and that doesn't come out. I do a lot of things privately that people don't see, and when they come out, I do not take credit for them. So, yes, quite a lot of things that I can do. Uh, if there's any other thing you'd like to do, uh, ask me. The few things you do, I wanted you to highlight, because I just feel that those things are very profound. Um, I know you are very vocal about gender mutilation for girls. Yes, yes. That's, uh, do you want to share a little about it? Uh, yes, I'm an ambassador with... Um, Female genital mutilation. Yes, no. Initiative for Girls' Rights. Yes. Girls right. Right. Yes. That's another foundation that crusades against female genital mutilation. So uh, we go around villages. I speak to young girls because if they have a knowledge of what it is, then they can actually also speak for themselves. I, however, lead to their voices in the sound. It goes a long way. So, and then we give incentives to the older ones especially the midwives, the local midwives, and all of that, so that, because that will motivate them. And then we give them hope, aside what they are used to, because for some of them, they are not trying to be wicked, it's just a means of livelihood. So we want to show them that there are other ways of actually uh, getting something to do and making money, aside from mutilating young girls, enlightenment. I'm, I'm actually a crusader. I do mind in terms of speaking and giving out incentives and gifts. Because when I talk to these older women, they see it from another light, that it can actually be decent. Because for, their, for some of them, they want their girls to be decent. That's why they are mutilating them. But I was not mutilated. And yet, I lived a very decent life. So seeing an example that your daughter can actually be like this without having to go through things like and I, I'm not, we're going to come back to you, uh, Pastor Naomi, but let me, let me stay on you a little bit. I love what you said, because what you said ties in, I, I'm not sure, I think it's Reverend F.F. who talked about modeling. Was it modeling? You or Tara, one of you. Um, you talked about modeling, so uh, what you're doing with those women is to show a portrait of what is possible. Yes. And provide an alternative yes. that they didn't know about. Yes. I want you to speak to the work you do with WINGS, and I kind of love the acronym W-I-N-G-S, yes. yes. Women in Need of, of Guidance and Support. Yes. You want to share that WINGS? Yes. Um, you see, when you talk about women, because a woman is uh, a womb carrier, and you are carrying load, you are always carrying something, family, people, the nation, and everything, and for some reasons in Africa, over time, well, yes, we are gaining our voices and everything, but you know, the role of women has been too um, underestimated. Like the men don't want to agree, but it is what it is. I realized that women in different phases of life and in different localities and regions, according to what they are faced with, they have different needs. And everything has to do with supporting them. You can't do it alone. You are a woman means that you also need other women who can hold your hands, who can stand by you and assist you in doing what you have been proposed by God to do. You have a purpose. In fact, being born into this world as a woman is a special gift by Jehovah, a special gift by God. And as you grow from being a girl child to being a full-blown woman, there's a lot of ways that you are going to need help. Uh, look at the women in local areas, uh, some of them who are in, you know, environments that are poverty stricken and all of that, they have potentials too. They need somebody who can come down to their level and assist them in doing what they want to do. Because for every mother, the first dream is that their children are successful. That's right. How do they achieve this success? They want to, but they can't. A woman who will go to farm and work all day and come back with just two, five, two bars of beer. As that woman going to send a child to school in nations like Nigeria, other nations of Africa, that things are not working well. So if there is another woman who God has lifted, that can draw their hands and show them, you know, a, a better way, something that gives them more income, definitely 
then we are going to have a balanced society. And then aside that, there are also women who are privileged who have the money, but do not know how to apply it. And so that's where the guidance comes in. That's where the support comes in. So we are not just dealing with women who do not have. We deal with the has and the has not. So whether or not you have, you need support. And sometimes all a woman needs is just somebody to help them and tell them, you are doing just great. You are beautiful. And I'm going to cite an instance. Um, like I said, some things are just blown out of you know, my hands. So a few people would know that I left my marriage. When I left, the first, I think, you know, it's different feelings. I've heard um, Mama Dejumo talk about it before. Immediately, I sang songs of praise. Mm -hmm. I worshiped, I smiled. As the hours grew and the calls started coming in, I knew there was trouble. <coughs> so I started losing weight. Mm -hmm. And then I started having different thoughts, mm -hmm. different thinking. I had the Holy Spirit. But when you are in certain situations, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is not going to come to you like Hail Mary. Mm -hmm. You are going to need angels in human form. Mm -hmm. yes. Wow. Yes. And, yes. and a call came in. Wow. I said, now me. Ah, I'm proud of you. Now me, belly. Are you fine? You know, in that so I said, yeah. So it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was like a step down. And then I didn't want to go out. Because for someone I said, because she stepped out, people are going to stop. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to see anybody. It was that bad. I was scared to step out of my house. It was that bad. I actually sneaked in into a home in Ondo State. I sneaked in. When I say I sneaked in, in a different car, it's in tech and everything. And then she said, Ah, if she always said he wants to see you on something, if she had said I want to see you, maybe I would have found an excuse that I do not know how to, you know, go to the He said, she said, if she always said he wants to see you. So I told my mom, I said, no, you know there's a lot of things telling me that you are not going to give an excuse. When I stepped into the church, there's no stone. Hmm. There are no voices. Hmm. Everybody is normal. Hmm. Everything seems normal. Hmm. And when she, when we met in church and everything, everything felt normal. From that day, I started going out. Yeah. And you know, everything just so. That's what I'm talking about. About being, you can actually. Act. In that very moment, I was not in need of money. There were people who gathered to say, maybe she's going to do something. Let's give her money. Let's, it was not money. If you gave me the old money, I would have still been in it. I just needed people who would say, you are fine. Okay. And you are okay. And you have not done anything wrong. You get it. So it was just, so that's what Wings is doing for women. Women in need of guidance and support, so emotional well being, mm. yes. financial well being, all round success. Mm. A rounded, grounded woman. Because a rounded woman is a grounded woman. I love it. Rounded, grounded woman. So we are going to come back to that. And I'm glad that you led, it was important to me that you led that conversation. So I want to come back to that, but I wanted to take a moment again. To honor Reverend FFE. I yeah. love her. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I might sound like a broken record, but we have to, we have to give honor to him, honor his view. Um, you know what she said? She said, and I walked into the church and there was no stone. Yeah. I don't know who heard that. Yeah. And I walked into a situation of shame yeah. and there was no stone. Yeah. So I wanted to just acknowledge that. Oh, that just, that's, that's incredible. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. So, Pastor Naomi, let's go back to you. How, how are you married to greatness? If you had something to tell your younger self, what would that be? If you could talk to your 15-year-old Naomi, what would you say to her? She said, hmm. <laughs> Naomi, life is not that hard. <laughs> Take a deep breath, be careful.
careless. Mm. 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 Keep your innocence. It's beautiful. Mm. Yes. Because what you don't know, you are not afraid of. Mm. You can take a leap. Those who jump, they jump because they are not afraid of heights. Mm. Mm. And they are not too calculated. Mm. So I will say that to myself over and over again. And I think it is the most beautiful way to live life to the fullest mm. and achieve the full purpose in life. Wow. 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 Okay, please clap. That's the game in the entire masterclass. Transition seamless to embrace you and manifest your God given self. Two more questions as we begin to round up. Um, rise and thrive is the team. They can't be rising without falling. Do you want to touch in one minute on a personal fat failure and how you navigate it through it? Both of you, and then anyone can go. A failure. And how, yes. Have you ever failed before? Like face down, shame kind of feel, and what do you do to get out of it? Okay. Um, I think on two occasions, because I'm, I'm a perfectionist and natural. And I don't know what. In life, God has been merciful and faithful to me. So I don't have many failures. And I'm very young. I'm a very small girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but my first taste was um, throughout primary school, I was always getting prizes. Prizes, prizes, because I'm always among the top three, at least. So when I fail, I'm top position. Mm. So, GSS won seven years grammar school. The results. Is the worst I've had in my entire life up till now. It was very bad. And I thought it was the end of the world because for somebody who does so well, and then I couldn't even understand why they wrote advice to you for another school. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my failures. Yes. <laughs> so I didn't go for three years. Advice to you for another school. As young, so I understand when young people commit suicide. Mm. It's possible. I was nine, mm -hmm. and I was looking for how to die. Mm -hmm. Went with my friend to a pharmacy, asking for Valium, Yamadine, things like that. I just, I didn't even know that the failure was not my fault, because I was, I was very sick. So I wasn't always attending classes and all of that. So the pastor took me home eventually, and my mom came to me and said, failure is not the end of success. Come on now. Mm -hmm. It's just the beginning. Hey. Failure is not the end of success. Mm -hmm. It's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then, so that's one thing I also say to women here, mothers here. Thank God for the mother that parted me. She does one thing, pumps me up. She sat me down and started telling me, she said, I, I'm supposed to beat you to a heart. I said, I don't even know, because if I beat you, you might. You, you would stop breathing. He said, but you know why I would have done that? Because you did not come home. Mm. She said, every time, he said, the Bible says, little children sin not. But if you sin, you are an advocate to come back home. Yes. She said, always come, come back, back home. Mm. When you fail, you should have come home back home. Mm. Anybody can shame you, but not your own. Yes. And she said, now me, I want to tell you, you are extremely intelligent. Mm -hmm. You are an exceptional A student. You can do it. And now you are not going to repeat classes. I will take you to a private school, one of the best. I will do everything. If I have to sell things, you will go there. And that was where I went to. And you will see that you can do it. The following year, I cleared it. Mathematics that I don't know. I had A in everything. I didn't have a single B. My result was entirely blue. I took all the prizes. That's the, I mean the following section. Just the next section. Just the next section. And that was how I overcame that failure academically. That's never happened again. That was the last time. And then the second biggest that I taught the world would end. Now I am more matured. I'm grown. And I, because I love beautiful stories. Mm -hmm. I love to tell beautiful stories. I've heard people say 30 years in marriage, this and that, and then, you know. So my expectation was high. And because I grew up in a background, I was born in deeper Christian life ministry. <laughs> where 
All you are taught is that if you are a good girl, you will marry a good man. Mm -hmm. And he will take care of you and honor you because you do not have a boyfriend. Because you did not have a boyfriend. Yes. Because you were not wayward. So automatically, I was a Cinderella, mm. expecting my prince in shiny armor. Mm. And that any man, no matter how terrible he is, he will find me a different and treat me like mm. eggs. Mm. So now reality came in Chai. that it was not my expectation. Mm. It was not the way I thought life would be. And many times I went. I went and I asked God, I said, I will never teach my daughters to be modest, to grow up. Ah, no, 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 no. Because God, where is the, the reward? Where is the reward? Where is the reward? And then God will tell me you are proud. Every time I say, where is the reward? You say, you are not the best human being. Yes, you live the modest life. It doesn't make you a good person. You surely must, you surely must be imperfect because you are human. And then he will tell me, I sent you here for a purpose. Focus on the purpose. Ignore every other thing. I said, God, that is difficult too. So I struggled and struggled with God until one day I stood in front of the mirror. Because I love mirrors a lot. So tell me. So I stood in front of the mirror and I said, God, this is me. Naked we came to the world. And naked we shall go back when we die. Today I submit totally to your will. Mm. I said, I want to make a covenant. If you give me a child, mm. and not just a child, you said I have a purpose. Now I want to fulfill that purpose. Give me the best. I'm saying it, and it's covered with the blood of Jesus. I said, give me the best of Abimelech. Mm. Give me the best in his language. Give me the best that is in him mm. as a child. If you do this for me, I will let go of this marriage. Wow. Whatever happens, I will let go. I will just, I will let go. It was hard because mm. he, I love perfect stories. So, and you know, I said, I didn't even remember saying that when trouble started. Mm -hmm. I said, God, if you give it to me. So, and then, I don't think it was up to, because I started buying my baby things. And I would I used to join the world and that was when I knew uh, I would just I was a silent, you know. So I would just on the cover of the cover. So when people are sharing their testimonies, I was buying baby things and everything I bought for my child, I think I I did with your shopping before I had I was just buying and then I took it and I became relaxed. Mm. And I felt, yes, I now have this You forgot seat. your mirror conversation. Yes. I now have this seat. If I have this seat, it's a permanent seat. Relax. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing can be. Now they must worship you. Unshakable. <laughs> yes, you know. And then, I thought it was a joke. Mm. Messages were coming. Because I always have people praying with me and praying for me. I'm blessed with spiritual parents. And the messages was coming and coming. Said, yes, forgive me. You're about to deliver the most important message that you have to deliver to women. If you had something to say in one minute, a burning message to women, what would that be? Uh, the Bible says that in all that get and get understanding. As a woman, you have to understand what it means to be a woman and the potentials you carry. You must have a full knowledge of yourself. If inside of you you feel like a slave, you will walk like a slave. Mm. But if you feel like a queen, even in your lowest estate, people will never see it. They will always see the crown on you. Mm. Wow. So you That's powerful. Wow. That's powerful. That's powerful. And I want to end up with saying, shame your shame. Yes. A living dog is better than a dead lion. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God, from Queen Naomi to Pastor Naomi, we've gotten a whole lot today. We are sweeter, we are more beautiful, and we are more blessed. Please, a round of applause for them. Can we give a round of applause for our moderator? Our moderating on that level, in between every session.
Revelation. It's what brought one tiny story. It's your message. Yes, you brought out the Lord. God bless you. Uh, as you have a <laughs> I think we have heard the truth now, and uh, I think there shall be peace now. So you don't need to drag anybody to the reason why Queen Naomi left that palace. She has come to tell us the real truth and the reason why she left the palace. So there's, need, there's no need to fight or to drag anybody into the reason why she left the palace. So I think by now, peace should reign everywhere. And to the palace of Onyo, if it, peace reign the palace and peace be with Queen Naomi, the prince Tadenikawu, and the rest of their family. So, guys, please, if today is your first time of joining us on this platform, please kindly subscribe to our channel and make sure you on that notifi notification button so that anytime we drop a new video, you will be notified. And to our returning subscribers, thank you guys for joining us at this particular time and in case you have any vital information you want us to know or you want to support us when we are that please kindly mail us at mr 0511 at gmail.com so the next time we'll be coming your way once again god bless you we say bye bye